y'all. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited about who I get to talk to today, but I'm excited about a lot of things. First of all, y'all know it's been a while since I've done a lot of my in-person interviews. I'm happy to be sitting down and in person with my friend today. I'm also happy, y'all, that I'm not running the cameras because normally I'm doing all the things. I'm happy that my hair is laying down and I'm not worried about any loose and stringies because I put some extra stuff on it to make sure it would sit straight. And I'm happy that I'm wearing clothes that hide a lot of things because y'all don't need to know about all the things that are going on up in here. The bottom line is I'm excited because most importantly, I get to talk to Naomi Rains today. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. Oh my gosh. So we've been in each other's presence now long enough to know that we might be cut from a little of the same cloth, just a little bit. It's the same cloth. <laughs> it, it definitely is. Yep. Okay, so I told my husband, I said, you know, it's a busy day. I got a kid graduating tomorrow. I said, but Naomi's in town and I'm just trying to figure out if I just need to do it or do it another time. He said, girl, what's wrong with you? Strike while the iron's hot. She's here. So you're in my presence today. Um, I have so many questions, but the most important one is this. This is the most important one. Oh, Lord. You, we're going to start with the most important We're going to start one. with the most important. Okay. We're going to start with the most important. You always look really cute. Like even when you're kind of laying low, you just look really cute. So I want to know is cuteness the way you roll or is it what you have to do to be functional in the world we live in today? Oh, Crystal, this is the way I roll. I mean, <laughs> I'm rolling cute all the time. No, um, okay, in real life. In real life. I don't think I would categorize myself as cute. So I'm very flattered, honored, grateful. I feel a little bit like an imposter. Um, okay. Because I do think, um, hmm, I think that I have tried my best to meet the demands of my current situation, which that is... Mean? That was like total code. Hello? <laughs> um, I think, okay, so I used to do this thing. I used to, I used to sell albums when I would go and sing. Now, you know... Your CD. My CD. Okay. I did a photo shoot for the CD, have a cover photo on the CD. But when I would go out to sing, I didn't Look have... Look like... Okay. And people would come to buy the CD and they'd be like, well, where's your CD? Is this you? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I decided uh, a few years ago that I would put more effort into the Keyword. way that Keyword I look. is effort. Effort. Mm -hmm. And I, if I'm honest, if you ask me, like, what's your style? Uh, my style is black leggings, a black hoodie, and a pair of ones. That's my style. And I, I know that that doesn't like fit into the category. You couldn't Google that, but um, I'm Maybe trying. Maybe we ought to create a category because that's my style. Okay, can we do that? I need a good, comfy, extra double X t-shirt because I need the that's... extra room. I just want to. And I need everything that stretches with me. That's... I want to feel like I got up out of bed and I don't, I'm not wearing clothes. And this is what I'm saying. Can this... we do that? We should do that. Forever. We should create a whole thing. We should name it. And then people will follow. Because you know what you name, there's a whole sermon in that. Word. Okay. I want Same. you to know I'm down for this. Okay. I'm actually serious. You should do it. Anything that's comfy, flowy, like, can we just be comfortable? Can we just stop pretending like we don't want to, we don't, okay, listen. When I go home after church on Sunday, mm -hmm. I am just dying to get back to my state of equilibrium. Yo. Okay. This is a thing. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. Okay, I have a whole conversation I want to have with you without these cameras. Hey! You're not uh, operating today, Rolling, because I just like to stay here. <laughs> I don't want to do a lot of things. I just want to stay here every every okay, day. Do you enjoy shopping clothes? Okay. Um, we know you don't want to be pinned up all the time, but in terms of when you make the effort, do you enjoy the journey? In real life, mm -hmm. no. Okay. But there are moments that I'm like, I'm gonna go grab something. If I know, I'm the type of person, I wanna know what I want and go get it. I don't like to browse and like, so let's see what they have. But if I do stumble upon something, I'm excited. But I'm not ever thinking like, let's just go in, in the store, unless it's Target. Cause then- That's different. Okay. Target is not just about clothes. It's Target is about your whole life. Uh, do you understand? I totally understand. So Priscilla and I, and sister and sisters-in-laws and cousins and all that, there used to be a day during the holidays where we would 
have a girl's day mm -hmm. and we would go have brunch, we would go see a movie, and in between brunch and the movie, there was shopping. Okay, we would go to the mall. Okay. My job was to bring my book. Their job was to shop and I would just move with them from store to store, but I would oh. sit in the hallway of the mall mm -hmm. on the bench while they went mm -hmm. in. If you find something in there that you think would be a blessing to me, I will come in, but I'm only coming in to try on that one thing you found because I don't enjoy it. And I remembered my dad and my mom, he would go with her shopping because she loved to shop, but that's what he would do. He would take a book. So I was like, well, that works for me. Like that, I literally get hives if I go into Ross. It's too unorganized. No, that's a mess. I can't find anything. Mm -mm. It's just, it requires a high degree of focus. And I don't want to spend the focus that I do have on that. So I just, that's my feeling about the matter. There's that. I think that that is really nice that you went with them. Because to me, I'm like, I'm stopping home. And I could have been like, I'm going to be at Starbucks. Y'all know yeah. where I'm at. Mm -hmm. That's my praise right there. And then, like, if I come in, then I'm just coming to talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm also trying to hurry you along. Like, <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. I'm so glad you people. Oh we could God. actually probably go shopping together. It, we'd be in and out. We In and out. And we'd get what we want. And, and I'd probably just end up at a restaurant. I just like to eat. There's that, too. Which is, probably leads us back around to why we want our clothes to be I just extra. need room. <laughs> <laughs> I just need room. Okay. I went. I was traveling. And I was going through um, the checkpoint at security and the guy looked at my passport and he looked at the passport and he looked at me and he looked at the passport and he looked at me and then he conferred with another person because that's how different I looked at my passport. Because you know how you go to get your license and you, you don't want that picture to look crazy. Yeah. So when I got it done that day, my hair was done. I had makeup on. I did it after church. He was like, you are, one of these things don't look like the other. <laughs> so I've had so that experience. About that. I've had that experience. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, you are the Naomi Rain. And I say Naomi Rain because everybody knows, everybody knows what that means. But I want to ask you, just in case you don't know what it means, it's Maverick City and all the things, all the songs you sing in, in your car and at church. That, that voice, that silky smooth, that's her. Okay, so, but you're not just Naomi Rain with Maverick City. You're Naomi Rain with all of your things that you have, your own music, your own album. Mm -hmm. Right now, what does it feel like to be the Maverick City Naomi Rain and the Naomi Rain that's the Naomi Rain? Because when I listen to your album, it's the same Naomi, but it's two different sounds. Not yes. your voice, but the music, the music direction is two different sounds. And I'm so curious how it feels right now to be carving out your own space in addition to the space that you've already carved out with yourself, with how so many of us know you well. This is a really nice question. Um, okay, so how it feels, I will say it feels it feels like the type of clothes we want to wear. It feels roomy and spacious and um, and very comfy. So one of the things about Maverick is that it Maverick City Music is the artist, mm -hmm. right? We are a collective of people that come together to lend our voices to that sound. Yeah. And yes, because we've written the songs, we contribute, but it's it's so collaborative. It's so gumbo right mm -hmm. um and so i love doing that because it's like man i would have never been able to even come up with this because i didn't i wouldn't have had the other ideas the other creativity that adds to this that feels um special like when i'm doing that i'm like oh yay i'm a part of something that's bigger than me and it's like beautiful and wonderful now doing my own stuff it's like but people don't see it that way they don't. I don't think they know. You're talking We're about collective. the technical. Yeah, you talking about the technical. What's written in the contract stuff? I think it's important that y'all know this because as things fluctuate, as people come in and out, um, even as like we're most of us that you might look at as the face of Maverick City Music, as we do our own projects and do like it. Pe some people get worried. They're like, Oh no, oh, what's going on? And it's like everybody keep calm. Like we were always. Your individual person, artists right. that came together as a collective. Maverick City Music is a collective and there'll be new people coming in and there might be people going out and coming back in. And so the point is like, we all love each other. We're, we're all writing together. We're all friends, family, but it's fluid. 
And um, because Maverick, the point of that was to highlight voices mm -hmm. and um, give people an opportunity to say what they have been called to say. And that doesn't mean we all have to say it at the same time, mm -hmm. you know? And it's tough. I know I'm, I, the amount of comments, posts, questions, are you still with me? And what da, 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 da. And then some of it is just like everything that everybody does, I'm responsible for as well. And it's like, wait a second, <laughs> like we're all individual people. We love the same Jesus, but you know, we're different and it gets a little tricky. But to answer your question, I feel free and roomy and and happy about um, what I'm able to uh, accomplish as a solo artist. I've, it feels like the most authentic expression of myself. Your solo music. Mm -hmm. Have you had anybody say to you, if you go and sing somewhere, like, is there a preference of songs or there is there a communication to you that's like y'all like me but you come you want me to sing those songs but I have my own songs how are you navigating that since no matter what you say <laughs> you are I'm music. like <laughs> with weeping and gnashing of teeth no um I think it's like it's difficult yeah it's very difficult because people just want to hear promises and they want to hear <laughs> gyra and mind you um I'm not tired of those songs yet. And even though, if you catch me on a on a night, uh, my girls are here, they're probably like, yeah, right. She She's sitting there like, I don't want to sing this song anymore. <laughs> um, but when I start to sing it, I'm right. always reminded of the God that I'm singing about. And I, I try very hard when I'm singing to actually worship God, you know, yeah. like let me actually sing this song and mean it. Um, and every time I do that, I'm able to lock in. But I think when, when I put out music, it's because the Lord has told me he wants me to release something in the earth or wants me to encourage the body in a certain way. And so if there's a preference toward what was for a two years season. ago, yeah, or right. yeah, another season, it's kind of like. And so then I have to move in my prophetic gift and mm -mm. Um, just operate in what I believe the Lord is telling me to do. I'm going to obey him over people right. every time. But then I also understand that I'm an artist and. That's a yeah. part of what this is. Some of it is we sing the songs that we sang for 10 years and and we just So let it what go. happens if you go to a church? Do, do you just sing whatever you sing? Do they Okay. They don't say nothing. Cuz listen. I just know listen. I love church people. I really do. I really do. I love the people who love Jesus. But we are our own breed. Really? Yes. Okay. Because I could see some church mother being like, but baby, we don't want none of that. We need the other song. Yeah. Well, it's kind of not like in my contract, but I'm not going to go somewhere where people are telling me exactly what to sing. Yeah. I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit. And then I think, and that's the, the good thing about being a part of Maverick is that people kind of expect us to make our own rules and to do what we deem to be <laughs> like yeah. what the Holy Spirit is saying. And so... We, I have the freedom to flow because yeah. that's how it's been established. They're like, oh, are you going to come? Somebody came to um, one of our concerts um, for I'm on tour now. They came and some they, my people were asking them, like, what's your favorite Naomi Rain song? They were like, we don't know. But they're like, but why did you come? They're like, well, we came for Naomi Rain, but, but why don't you know a song? And they're like, well, we just came to worship. So they're understanding. When I heard that, my heart leapt. Um, I'm like, oh, you just you knew it. that wherever I would be, we would be worshiping. Yes. That's all I want. That's amazing. That's all I want. More That's than amazing. a song. Like, mind you, I want people to buy the songs. I want them to get the music. Hello. I, I need to feed my kids. <laughs> but more than that, did you come to worship? Did you come for an encounter? And if I'm known by that, then I'm like, okay, then God's getting the glory. We're good. You are uh, traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. But you got a kid. So how does this work? Three of them bad boys. So wait, uh, it's one girl. And two boys. And two boys. Mm -hmm. What are their ages now? So April 17, Caden 14, okay. Savion 9. Now look, what's bad is that I know their ages, but their names. I'm like, who Listen, did you I? know who you are. What did I what you call you, you when know you were who, born? You know I was talking to you. <laughs> yes. You know your name. Get on me, I, okay. But boy. Okay, travel is not easy. When you're leaving kids behind? No. You have strong support, obviously. I have very strong support. Like family? Yes. Okay. My mother and my father, primarily. My mother-in-law, she comes, uh, they live in Charlotte now. We're, we're in New York. My mother-in-law travels up. We bring her up to be in the house and to help the kids get out to school, get them yeah. organized, settled, cook dinner, um, do all that stuff. My, my parents 
100% hands-on. And that's why I'm okay. I, if I'm honest, um, I'm not against outside help and I may have to look into it in the future, but I am like 100% secure because it's not somebody that's on the outside coming in. These are people that raised me and yes. you know, I know who they are. I know they raised my brother not well, my husband well. Like my kids are in good hands, they love them. Um, and my kids love their grandparents. How do they feel about you being gone? Um, you know, it's a mixed bag. Of course, it's three different kids. Yeah, and honestly, I think because um, my husband and I, we've talked to them about ministry, the call. They understand it. My, my parents have been in ministry our whole lives. We live, this is our life, mm -hmm. right? So they kind of have come into this understanding of like, okay, we lay down our lives for the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's the point mm -hmm. of it. And everything that we do is about that. But also, I think as things have gotten a little more difficult, the time. Yeah, laying down your life at the local church 10 minutes down the road is, is different. different than I'm gone for a few weeks because I'm on a bus. Yes. But you're seeing me everywhere. Right. That's different. It's different. And so if I'm honest, um, so this Mother's Day, oh, why am I sharing this? Still going to share it. Um, this Mother's Day, I, in the card, was like, Mommy, I love you and I miss you. Mm -hmm. Each one of them signed it. I miss you so much. I miss you. And we, I don't get that normally. Mm -hmm. And that, so as much as I think they're doing well, mm -hmm. I don't know if they're always saying mm -hmm. how much it affects them. And we talk, but I don't know if they are yet able to even identify some of what they're feeling, but they words. do say, yeah. Adult words. Adult but words. they are saying that they miss me, which I'm happy about. Yes. And so I'm like, I miss you but too. But it's like, what do I do about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. I mean, I think every, it's different, but I think every working mother has the same, Yep. you know, I remember being single and I moved my daughter. I was working downtown and I moved her from the school she was in to be at a, a school in downtown Dallas mm -hmm. so that I could ride with her on the car to school so that if she had a lunch, I could dart over there and be with her. I mean, I'm moving hell and high water to be available, but there were still things that I had to miss. Like I couldn't be at everything. So mm -hmm. all the stay at home moms are all there. And she's like, but mom, you can't come to this thing. And I'm like, I have done all these things for you, but I still can't check all the boxes. All there's still them. some things that, you know, I gotta be at work and I can't come to everything that you do. So then there's this guilt of, and I, you know, and I've had seasons in my life where I have been a stay-at-home mom. You still can't do it all. Well, that's what I'm saying. I was a stay-at-home mom too, and I felt more guilty, honestly, then than I do now. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what? No yeah. matter what I do, I'm gonna feel this kind of mom guilt. And I think maybe because my children were younger and they could they could express themselves even well, they could express, but yeah. I, we couldn't communicate on the right. same right, level. Right. Now I feel a little better because I'm able to even let them know intentions. And I think I'm better at keeping my word, you yeah. know, and making sure I don't say what I can't do, you know? Right, right, um, right. I'm considering homeschooling them now because I'm like, you need to be able to come out on the road and be with me. Um, we're figuring that out. And they, and they, my daughter's like, okay, cause she just is done with school. But I'm like, then I'm like, mm, Wait a minute, you need but to she's stay almost school. done. She's almost done. I'm like, you need to go to prom. <laughs> and she's like, no mom, I'll just come be with you. And I'm like, Mm, everybody keep calm. So now I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this because you're just a little too excited. You know, because I want her to have a social life and be a part of things. I don't want her to regret it, you know? And so there, there's so much. My son, my middle son, Caden, we call him the mayor um, mm -hmm. because he's literally, if he, if he was in your house, he'd be showing you around. Mm -hmm. He'd be like, come. You know, that's who he is. He loves people. He loves his friends. I don't want to pull him out of school, you know? And so... This is the this is where I feel the guilt now. I don't feel guilty now for leaving okay. and doing the work. How'd you get comfortable with that? Um, because I really a lot of prayer, and I hate to say this because I know it seems like the the cliche answer, but, but a lot of prayer. I just have peace. I just have peace. I know I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. And I know I'm doing the right thing by him by saying, hey, you need to stay in school. This is this is a part of what God is doing in your life. And, th and these relationships are actually good for you. They're building you, they're growing you. The younger one, I don't know, he, you know, we, we figured It's the out. baby. It's the baby, because he yeah. want to do what everybody. Yeah, but I was gonna say there's no rules. The rules do not apply to the baby. I was the baby, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
just looking at my baby, I'm just like, all the things I said I would never do. Because I would look at people and they would be like, he's the baby or she's the baby. And I'm like, but you can't stop parenting. And here I am like, what? You didn't do it? All right, we'll do it tomorrow. Don't right. It. It's like, it's like, whatever. Yeah, mom guilt is real. And you do have to reach a point where you know that you're operating in the place that God has for you to operate in, doing the best you can and leaving the rest of the Lord. Because even if you were checking all the boxes, you can't control the outcome anyway. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. I'm not, I, and I can't say, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, every day I feel amazing. You know, there are some days where I'm like, this is kind of like yeah. what I'm supposed to be there. But I've found a way, and I, I think I've been making exceptions. I talked to my manager the other day, I was like, I need to be home every single weekend. He was like, this is impossible. Like, if you're gonna like take events, how are you gonna be home? I said, we need to do whatever we can to yeah. make sure that, okay, if they're in school, they're in school. But on the weekends, we're home. And sometimes you just have to make sacrifices and say, no, this is a line that I'm drawing and this is just it. And the Lord is gonna provide and make a way. And I'm believing that God will do that. That doesn't mean there's like, if the White House calls, I'm not gonna be like, it's the weekend. You know, I might say, <laughs> okay, we can take one weekend off. Y'all go play with your friends or go yeah. to your cousin's house. You know, but there's there's something to making sacrifices. And I think I'm more in that space now. I'm like, okay, we, we had a year of, or two years of like, Going Craziness. hard. Yes. And now I can kind of lift. I remember once, one year, I told my husband, he was so mad. I said, I was like, babe, this is not the year of the birthday. We are not. Because we were the crazy people that did, did the whole extravagant thing. Extravagant parties every single no, one. It's like, no, what? You're, no. you're eight. Like, you're not, why are we doing 11? I'm telling you, every, and I was like, this is not the year of the birthday. He had to wrestle with the Lord on that for a long time, but he understood. I was like, we are like, this is, this is the focus this year. There's, there's something that has to be done and we're going to do it. And now, now we can have birthdays and now we don't have parties. Oh for no, anything. I gave that up. I told the kids when they were little, you get a good one at five, a good one at 10. When you hit double digits, when you turn 13, 16 and graduation. Every other thing is small. I need to write these down. That's what we did. Now the baby has had a good birthday every single year, but everybody else, five, 10, 13, 16, and 18. Because I have five kids. I yes. can't do all of that. I can't do all of that. It's, it's too, too much. much. It's too it's much. It's too much. And I think that it it reinforces something that's not- Realistic. Re for them. <laughs> like, and but so, okay. Ooh, okay. So what I did learn in, I think it was when we started winning awards, I was so ambivalent about that. And like, oh, won an award. Okay, great. Guys, stop talking about it. Like, I just kind of yeah. was like, no, I don't want to. And I realized that was a place of emotional immaturity for me. And the Lord really had to deal with me. He was like, no, I've called my people to celebrate. You need to learn how to celebrate. But were you doing that because it just wasn't a big deal to you because you were operating in what you had been operating in before you started getting awards? Or were you trying to downplay? What was the deal? Some of it. Some of it was, okay, this really isn't that big of a deal. But then the other side was when people were making a big deal of it, I was like, no, 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 no. Everybody keep Meaning, calm. Meaning I'm still Naomi? Right. Okay. And so that was coming from a different place. And it's like, you can celebrate and enjoy and commemorate moments. But let's talk about that place. What you said, it's coming from a different place. To explain that to me. It was coming from a place that was very comfortable, shrinking, hiding, everybody look away, like, Averting, diverting, but I don't know what the word is, child, but it is what it is. Like, don't pay attention to me. Don't see me because I'm seeing what I'm doing, what the Lord's calling me to do. And then outside of that, don't even talk about how I did. Don't tell me I did good, bad, nothing. I don't want to hear nothing. Why? It, fear. Of? Fear of, honestly, fear of success. Fear of um, being seen. Fear of being known. And fear of having to be accountable for the good. I wasn't, I'm not so afraid about the bad, like tell me what's wrong so I can fix it, you know what I mean? But it was more so, don't tell me I did a good job because I might not believe I did a good job. So now I have to fight with your but version of good and mine. where does that come from with you? You're the baby of the family. You're always celebrated. Aren't babies always celebrated? Like why, you're talking like an oldest child actually. Like no. I gotta, if I, if I was successful, can I be successful again? Well, like that sounds, so where does that come from for you? I think if I'm honest, um, which I always will be, um, 
I think some of that was my church upbringing. Um, I grew up in a mega church, which I think you can understand. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and it was high quality, high focus on excellence. Okay. And everybody couldn't meet that mark. Mm -hmm. And when you did, you were elevated or put in certain places. And then it made you, or it oftentimes the people that maybe couldn't started to treat you a different way. And so I was mm -hmm. alienated and I felt like I lost friends when I was younger because I was good. Mm. And so I think as I got older, I started to try to mitigate that so I could maintain relationships mm -hmm. with people. And if you told me I was good, you reminded me of the people that were telling me to be excellent and putting me in put. So it's like I didn't want our friendship or our relationship to be clouded by what I what I remembered it as, right? Or that first initial traumatic thing. And then if you were, um, I guess if you enjoyed what I did, it, it was more like a, like a fan perspective. And then I felt like maybe we would never be able to actually be friends because I was in a position that you weren't, or I was invited into the back room and you weren't, and I was able to get that. And it just, it just made my relationships complicated. So I took it upon myself to be like, I don't know what's going on and I'm just going to act like nothing matters. And, and I, I even pulled myself out of stuff. I wouldn't, I stopped auditioning for things and stopped trying for, I, I literally became an underachiever because I was afraid of what came with all of it. And there was something that snapped uh, in me when I was about maybe four, 15 or 16. I was like, hello, like you're wasting, you're squandering the things that God has given you. And I found some good people and I'm, start, I'm still unlearning a lot of those mm -hmm. habits as I meet more people. But um, a lot of it, I hate to say like, it's the church, it's not the church, it's where, it was the culture that I came up in. Okay, but then you really are in back rooms and you are getting invited to places and stages where other people are not. So now that you're here in the place where you're trying to avoid, how is that going? You know, um, okay, this is what I believe about that. I believe that this is a space that was cut out for me. It's hard for me to say that. I was about to say, I was about to say, I feel. It's because it sounds like, oh, I'm a, it's, and I don't even mean it like that. I think that certain people are just called to certain spaces Ooh, and certain that. things. And I don't know why I'm going to cry. You can't. You know, I'm not going to negotiate the vision with the Lord. Some people are called and chosen for certain things. And so like, and I say this, like we wrote um, Jaira in that line, I'm already loved, I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. I remember like the Lord gave me vision for this. He showed me, he said, I'm going to call you to arenas. I'm going to call you to stadiums. I'm going to call, who can, I wasn't even thinking about that. I just want to just worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm at a conference. I'm at a Jesus culture conference, just lifting my hands and you're showing me arenas and stadiums. And you're telling me that I would be a part of a civil rights movement in the, in the music industry. I didn't even think that we had issues with between blacks and whites anymore. Cause you know, we're this 20, 2007, you know, like I was just thinking like that doesn't, but that's what he was showing me. That wasn't my dream. Mm -hmm. And so now when I get in these rooms, I go, okay, this is the way he wanted it. And I'm not gonna fight that, but it's also not gonna stop me from being friends with somebody who might only be singing in their local church. And it doesn't mean I have to be separate from, from somebody who's maybe not called to that. But how do you handle it when they do what they do? Because people do that. They, they, they see do. you on a stage, they see your social media, they're getting the notifications of your YouTube things. And because people do what we do, mm -hmm. we bring separation. You're different than me, which means then I treat you differently. And sometimes, you know, without attempting to, people will say things that are a little bit snide because they're trying to make light of the fact that, I mean, we know you can't, you, you know, I can't well, believe I you stopped to talk to me. I know you're busy. Right. Yes. So that is the reality, the thing that you were avoiding. <laughs> The thing yeah. that you're avoiding is, is going to happen or has happened for sure. It's so happening. how are you navigating the reality of the thing you were running from? I think what I realized is that it's okay. I think I understand where they're coming from. I've learned, I'm learning to separate and like, there are some people that don't really mean you well. 
and they're doing stuff like that and it's actually like just fueled by We like don't care jealousy. about them. We don't care about them. There are people that actually mean you well and they just don't have, they just really don't even know what's going on. And this is their thing or their insecurities. I've learned to kind of be okay with it. I think there's a price. So I could have, I could have sat back and, and hidden myself and, and done all the things and I wouldn't be doing what I was called to do and purpose to do. So I would be like double miserable. If this is the one half of misery that I have to deal with, like if this is the one piece, I'll take this. Finish that I think sentence. There is a price. There's a price to this. There's a price to somebody sitting on the couch with somebody and them saying, all I have to say is their name and you know what, there's a price to that. And People don't talk about that. you don't want to look like you're arrogant or the person that's that's aware that you've been given some afforded or afforded some special opportunity, but like, let's not pretend this, this is what it is. And there's a heavy price and it's, it's hard. And sometimes when I'm faced with this stuff, that's difficult, I'm sad. And I'm, I've learned to be okay with that too. Like some stuff is just sad and it's hard and you, you walk through it. And if this is a part of the price I have to pay, because ultimately my goal is to reach people and to encourage them, to edify the church, to preach the gospel. If this is the price, okay, I'll suffer for Jesus. Like, <laughs> it's okay. And that doesn't mean it's easy. Mm -mm. It sucks. Are you still at the same church? No. Do you have a good church home? I do. And do you feel like you can go and be there? Yep as a person who attends church? As a person who attends, well, here's the thing. I'm, I'm a pastor in the church, Okay. but I can go. I don't have to wear makeup. And I've, we've set it up that way. I can, I can just be, I can I go in the fellowship hall after church and just be with the people. And, and I try to do that. There are some days where I'm like, I'm tired um, and I lay up. Um, but I've found a space, a community of people that I know go out of their way to make, to make it a safe space, a safe space. And I'm great. And I used to be like, no, I don't want anybody to do that. And my, uh, my apostle was like, uh, relax. Like this is a part of how we love you, how we serve you and just everybody keep calm. And so I've just learned to accept that people are trying and the way that they love me is by not asking like, or saying, oh my God, I love your new song. And then sometimes they sneak it in and it feels nice and it feels authentic and it feels like, okay, thank you. Cause sometimes you need to hear that people like the song, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You think that because lots of people know it or sing, sing it or stream it or whatever, that that communicates all you need to know. And sometimes you just need a little 17 year old, 24 <laughs> year old girl to say, I love your song. Makes all the difference in the yeah. world. Um, I think one of the hardest things <clears throat> when you're normal, whatever normal is, normal in the sense that you wear t-shirts and stretchy black yoga pants and you don't want to wear makeup, Okay, is, um, is being served. I have a hard time being served. Uh, and it sounds very crazy because I don't have a problem serving anybody else. I, in fact, I will insist that you let me serve and that kind of thing. But I think acknowledging that um, and letting people serve you, it sounds so terrible, but like let people serve me. But I think that like in our home, like in our marriage, one of the, the reasons why I married my husband is because he was a servant and he mm -hmm. knew how to, you know, I don't know if you know, my husband managed Kirk for 20 years. Oh no. So that whole dynamic of I see what you need and where other people want to take from you, mm -hmm. I see what you need. Um, and he did that for me um, and still does it to this day. And I don't think I would know unless I had been with someone who knew how to serve, how important it was to serve people who everyone else was pulling from. But when other people are not there, giving boundaries for you or protecting you? Are you good at drawing boundaries for yourself? I am learning. I'm learning. I, and I think my personality type is the type that once I learn something, oh, I'm good at it, you know, I'm gonna do it. And so I think I learn things in increments. And so <laughs> most people probably tell you that 
oh, Nay is direct and she's going to, I am, I am but direct. you had to learn that. Yes, and I'm still in my head overthinking stuff um, for like two hours. I'm looking over there now because I'm like, they know. I'm like, huh. I'm like I have a personal assistant, and if she tries to grab something that I'm grabbing, I'm like, don't touch it. <laughs> like, you know, I can I can be assertive with like, let me do it, but then also it's like, can somebody help me? <laughs> you know, it's 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 a lot. I'm learning. I'm learning, and I all of this is new. Like. This whole thing, even with with marriage. So, I was ministering before this, and you know, in the church, say, you talked about singing, and you talked about having your your own CDs in the back. Um, how long you been doing this? I've been doing this because everybody thinks you just got here. I've been doing this for real for eleven years. Yeah, like for real. I used to travel as a minister. The church is a way has a way of serving. So I right. always had people that wanted to carry my and I would be so uncomfortable, like, oh, don't carry my bag. And oh, I can carry my own bag. And I, and I could, right? But I think the Lord was using that time to prepare me mm -hmm. for a moment like this, a moment that I even really couldn't be prepared for because when all of this Maverick stuff happened, it happened so fast. Yeah, It happened so hard. Like right, the, strong. It mm -hmm. was strong. And there was no way. It's like we literally talked to each other. And we're like, we had collective trauma. Uh, <laughs> if everybody was, we all went through the pandemic together. Right. And then we were going through success. It's like a, it built on top of, it was terrible news, but terrible in the way that something is terrific or terrifying. It's just like, it's just great. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. And this was difficult. And so I always say I'm learning because I think some things I just had to, do so quickly yeah. because it was like, it's so fast. And so you have to learn. And so people are coming and they're helping. And so it's like, okay, I'm doing it. Uh, 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 uh. And now I think I'm, it's, it's catching up. What, what hit my brain is catching up with my heart. Yeah. And I'm really learning how to accept it and receive it and not go home and loathe and like loathe myself or feel bad. And, oh, did they take that? Th and then uh, mm -hmm. I'm kind of going, okay, now let me relax. And I think I trust the people that are around me too. I think I have some pretty good, solid folks um, that do really care about me and um, aren't just here for that, but but they're but they're serving. Okay, but have you had anybody around you who's just here for that? Um, and how have you prevented? I love how you keep keep looking at your crew over here. They're like, I'm like I don't, no, what's funny? I wasn't like, even looking at them. They like, we can tell you who they are. <laughs> you know. Yes, I think I was. I recently was really hurt by someone who I thought that's a part of the price was my friend. Yeah, and I realized, oh, you are just here for the things. Yeah, and that is still very hurtful. But I, I think I navigated that one pretty well. Um, was that in the learning? It's place or was it from a learned place? Like you said, you have to learn things and once you got it, you got it. Had Was that one of those moments where you were practicing or were you like, no, I, I know how to, I know how to love you and release you. Yeah, I know how to love you and release you. It took me back to like, oh, I remember this, okay. <laughs> and it's okay. I think because I have really good people around me, I'm yeah. able to share. I didn't share a lot before. Yeah. Now I'm able to share and I say, hey, this is what I'm seeing, experiencing. And usually when you say, hey, I noticed this or something, everybody's like, I knew it, I saw it. <laughs> well, why you <laughs> didn't say something? <laughs> Everybody needs to get rebuked, <sighs> need a beating. But um, yeah, I'm, I, that happened and I was like, okay. And it helped. Um, doesn't make the pain any less. To me, I thought that, um, that life was good when there was no pain. So to me, an indicator of me being hurt or sad was like, oh no, everything's out of control. What am I doing? And now I realize I'm like, oh no, this is good. I'm learning. That I'm person learning. wasn't for me. That hurts me. I'm, it's hard, struggling, but this is okay because grief is a natural response to loss. And so I lost somebody. I lost somebody and I'm sad and I'm okay with that. Doesn't feel good hate it but um but it's okay that's good that's so good trying so you do these car chats yes. in seasons yes why are we doing these why do you do these because i like to talk <laughs> <laughs> i really do i think conversation is one of the greatest gifts um that we have um i think so much more is left unsaid 
um, about things that really matter, real heart matters, I think most of us don't really say. Mm -hmm. You ever see one of those movies where um, the girl like catches the guy like kissing another girl or mm -hmm. hugging and it, he wasn't really like kissing her like the earring was caught yeah, or something. Yeah. And then she's like, talk about it. all the yes. assumptions. And yeah. it's like, and I'm screaming at the TV like, just tell her that you not, a, you know, and she's <laughs> gone. And then there's like a montage and then you have yeah. to wait three months until they get right. back together. Right. And I'm like, why did why did we do this? Yeah. Um, I like to talk about the things. And so I want to get with people like you and have conversations and see what I can learn. What, how can I view this differently? Because my perspective is my perspective, but I grow when I see and hear yours. And maybe I can, I don't know, maybe we can share that with people who might not ever get mm -hmm. to have a conversation with this many perspectives. They're not bold enough to have conversations, but listen, they are bold enough to listen. Listen, all you and I need is a crack in the dough. Talking about, is this, is this what we're doing here? Is this what we talk about? <laughs> Three topics that you think we don't talk about enough that really, really need conversation. It's me trying not to say the thing that I no, want to say. No, say it. Say it. It's right there. I already feel it. Go ahead. Okay. I think we need to talk about. Hey there, we're going to get right back to my chat with Naomi in just a moment. But I wanted to make sure that I took this opportunity to make sure you don't miss out on an exciting event this year. It's 2023 and I want to invite you to come to California with me. I'm taking a group of women with me in October of this year to California to be surrounded by beautiful scenery, an awesome lake, wonderful women, an opportunity for you to hear the rhythm of your own soul, to slow down and to hear God speak to you. I'll be joined by some amazing speakers, uh, an amazing worship experience. And all I can tell you is this experience is unique and there's nothing like it. I've only done it once before. It was four years ago and it's time to do it again. So I'd love for you to join me. You can find out more by going to the sistercircle.com forward slash retreat. Well, you, you will find out everything you need to know right there to register to come. If you have been thinking it's time for me to get away, to make room to, to be by myself, but also just to get away from the everyday, I invite you to come, even if you come alone. I promise you won't leave that way. So join me this October, 2023. I'll be there and I hope to see you there too. I think we need to talk about women's view of sex. I was waiting for it. I was like, it's a three letter word. I know it's, it's come on out. Did, you know, that was the first thing. <laughs> Hello? Um, yeah. I think we need to talk about it. What does that mean? I thought you were going to say sex. So women's view, what do you mean? Um, Meaning the ch church girl? That Kind of, but it's, but it's even more than that. I, our role in society, so much has changed, but, there are, but the beliefs and mentalities really still haven't fully changed over. Okay. And so I think that we're, we're catching, we're trying to catch up to maybe where we are in the business world or the political sphere or, you know, with our bodies and in our relationships, that stuff still hasn't mm -hmm. morphed, fully morphed. And so we go into life with presuppositions of a world that doesn't fully exist anymore, mm. you know? And, you know, you're making some church people really uncomfortable because they're, they're basically like, but, but it's supposed to be. Well, I think that the thing is, it's that so much of what you're saying can be tied to things that aren't good. So because we're afraid of the things that aren't good, we mm -hmm. throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. So the things that are good don't have a place. They don't have a place. But this is this is life in God in general. Yeah. Like we're all supposed to eat. We're right. not supposed to be gluttonous. Right. Sex is good. Right. Not supposed to do it outside of the confines of mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. There are things that like, and I know nobody wants to talk about when I read my script, when I read the scriptures and I see what the qualifications are of a deacon or an elder, it says not given to much wine. <laughs> but we go can't have, <laughs> all the way in. I'm and I'm not saying that so that we can go uh, have a rave, a raver or so. I don't know what it is. I don't even know what these things are where you just drink a lot. <laughs> but. I'm saying we have got, we're so afraid of the extreme that we don't deal with 
what what God may have given us for joy and right. for pleasure. Right. We are afraid of pleasure. Ooh. We're afraid of that. I mean, and I'm, hello, I just sat here and said, I didn't want to sing and do the things because I was afraid that I wasn't going to, yeah, like, it's like, oh no, this is too much, this is too much for me to handle, so I won't handle it at all. And when I look and when I read the scriptures, when I read my word, I'm seeing that that comes from more of a, a different mindset than the one I believe that God, mindset. yeah. He's made us free, and that's not to act a fool. Right. You're free to do it or not do it, but right. don't. It. So anyway, I think when we throw the baby out with the bathwater, mm -hmm. we're literally killing babies. Mm -hmm. Like this is not good. Did, did we did we miss it? <laughs> it was like the point was save the baby. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we need to talk about those things because there's a generation coming up that's finding out mm -hmm. that wasn't true. Right. So now, because you told me something that was a lie, that I don't know if I can, is a lie. Now I'm throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Right. No, right. and don't throw Jesus out. Right. Because what we're what we're giving these kids, or what we're giving these new believers, these babes in Christ, is a version of Jesus that doesn't match who He actually is. Right. And I don't even want to say was. Yeah. Who He is. Right. What is this faith that we're walking people into? What is it? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. I, this is one of the most important things to me because this is a foundation of our belief system. You live and think and move and respond to people and relate to people based on what you believe. Right. And when people come into this faith and, and say, I'm being born again and, I'm, and they want to believe this and they find out it was a lie, I think that is, that is worse than anything. And Jesus says, like, if you, if you lead these little ones to sin, you'd be better off. Right. Like, put tying a millstone. He's basically right. told people to, yeah. to end their lives. Yeah. Tie a millstone around your neck and go jump in the river. Jesus is serious about that, about leading little ones astray. And I think when we think of that, we go, well, that's why we're saying don't ever have sex. No. But you're missing it. Because that's not what he said. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. And it went, I'm sorry, last thing. Mm -hmm. When I look at this account in the Garden of Eden, between Eve and Satan, God said, mm -hmm. don't eat of the fruit. Satan goes, don't touch it. Or you, mm -hmm. he didn't say it's don't touch it. It's just one little tweak to the greater truth. And when we throw the whole thing out. And that's to me the issue. It's always, it's been the same issue. Yeah. And so I'm. You're right, because I had a girlfriend in college and she got married not long after we graduated. And um, <laughs> it's at some at some point uh, soon after she got married, I said, girl, how's marriage? And she said, girl, it's amazing. And I said, that's great. And she said, listen, can't nobody tell me nothing. If I want to hang from a chandelier, <laughs> the marriage man is undefiled. <laughs> and listen, she should say that. I was traumatized. I was oh. like, oh my God, what are you talking about? Like, I mean, I'm just saying the reaction I know, I know, yeah. is like, we, there are so many things that we make Jesus about and we try to make Jesus rules and regs. And he was never rules and regs. He was always relationship. Always. And here's the thing. The relationship informs the way I rule my life, like how my life is ruled. Right. It's ruled by the relationship. Right. And so I'm concerned that we have such a desire for control and such a fear I think we really fear, oh, this is probably going to be scandalous. I think we have such a fear of the, of the effects of sin that we nullify the cross mm. and we nullify what was actually done. I think there, I, I remember being in church and I'm going to say thinking I knew Jesus, but I didn't. Mm. I had to fall. I had to understand what sin really was, that I was a sinner. You can't repent at two. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't repent. You can't fight. Like, I'm, and you do you get what I'm saying? About Jesus. You can learn to love Jesus, but you, have, you don't have an awareness you, of your need for a Savior. Even Jesus says to Peter, he's like, when you are fully converted. And this is after he's been walking with Jesus for two and a half, three years. Fully converted. What? And I think when you grow up in church, you're not, you're not yet fully converted. You're it's learning. Cultural. Yeah, it's, it's a culture. I'm living, I'm trying, I'm doing. It's not until you recognize, oh, I am depraved. Like, this is not okay. Like, uh, my mind or my, my flesh or whatever. I need God. I realize I recognize Jesus for who he actually is. Mm -hmm. the, the answer for all of my things. That's when I'm, uh, okay. I think I got saved when I was probably like 19. Mm -hmm. 
right about the time you was, <laughs> I always tell my children, between 15 and 25, those are your stupid years. Hello? You may be less stupid than others, but you will think you know more than you do. And because you think that, you're gonna make mistakes. And some of them will be great for some of y'all. And some, But this is what I always tell all my kids. I may not be right about everything, but I'm always telling you the truth. And mm. you will figure out, probably when you get past your stupid years, that everything <laughs> I was telling you, not 100, but the majority mm. was true. So you can either le learn truth the easy way, listen to your, your leader <laughs> and your guide through life, mm -hmm. or you can learn the hard way. And life is a very hard teacher. But what you will learn at some point in your life is the truth. I just want to save you from the damage you're right. going to do to yourself in the stupid years. But it's during that time, I think, where even if you've been in church your whole life, your eyes are open to what you're capable of, yeah. what you're capable of thinking, what you're capable of doing, what you're capable of not doing. Mm -hmm. And the awareness of yourself is what brings you to your knees. So sex is number one. What's number two? Things we need to talk about. Um... Cause that was really like one A B C D E F G like subtopics. But anyway, go ahead. Number two. Um, I think platonic friendships. Mm. Mm. I just friendship. That has an A B C. I uh, know it does. <laughs> Kim Kardashian A B C D E. What is what is? <laughs> I think friendships are beautiful ways that God continues to grow us and. Um, sanctify us. Mm -hmm. um, I used to think that only marriage did that, and then I realized, oh no, it's the relationships. It's Can a married woman have a platonic uh, relationship with a person of the opposite sex? I think so. I do. I think if it's pure, and if it's. But what about the rules and the regs? You know, I'm I'm against about, these rules and regs. What about, about, what about my the fact copy that up? you can't? You want to avoid the appearance of evil. So if I'm sitting there chumming up with a friend, that could be a problem because like, what about that? What about jealous husbands? What about like, how, how can it be good? How can, how can it be good? Because there can be things and there have been things. Yeah. have been born out of platonic friendships that aren't. I think it's just like anything. Like we know like marriage is good, but also it can be bad. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, what what we're doing in any situation is accommodating for people's weaknesses and insecurities. And I think that when you are married, your marriage should be the primary, the primary relationship in your life. And I'm hoping that if you have a platonic friend that your spouse is okay with this um, person. I think like in my, in my household, my husband washed the dishes all the time. And some people go, you're the woman, you're supposed to wash the dishes and he's supposed to um, take out the garbage, even though I don't touch garbage. So <laughs> that's still, a, hello. Um, there are some things that we are we we say is normal, but then there are other things that work for us and we figure it out. Some yeah. men stay home and some women go out. And I think you figure out what works um, in your relationship. Um, anything that's full of deceit and nonsense and is leading you toward temptation, mm -hmm. um, I think you need to flee from that in any way. Why is platonic, th why is platonic number two? Why is it, why is it underneath your skin and bothered or think that it's something that you're like, we gotta talk about this? Well, I think we need to talk about it because, and it wasn't even just um, for like people of yeah. opposite sex, even for same sex um, friendships. Is platonic I, same sex? Do I not know the definition of platonic? Platonic is just friend, friendly, friendly relationships. Teach me some, grab yeah. me a river, okay. Yeah. My bad. No, no, no. Um, friendship. Friendship. I, I, it was kind of redundant. I said platonic friendships. So it okay. was kind of a redundant right. phrase. Sorry. Okay, so yeah, friendship is a thing for you because? Because I think friends are the most important relationships in your life. They inform you. They, mm -hmm. um, they help you discover and establish what you believe. These are people that pray with you, should pray with you. And these are the people that also, if they betray you, it can shatter you. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I just, I think relationships are the currency of life. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that when we get a better handle on friendships, um, people's lives will be better. I think I agree. a good friend can make or break, uh, can make your life a bad friend, can break it. Now, I sometimes think we kind of go into it willy nilly or we're too afraid to commit so that we live on the surface with people and don't go deep and then you can't grow. That's right. Like, the point is to grow. 
We say to women, you know, when you get married, you're, you should prioritize your marriage above all other relationships, which is true. But sometimes I think what we don't tell women is that when you get married, don't forget about your friends. Yeah. Because at some point, even while you're prioritizing your marriage, um, those intentional friendships, um, and they will ebb and flow through different seasons depending on the season you're in, but that's like, it's the currency of life. It's how yeah. you celebrate, it's how you have fun, it's how you, you know, share in similar interests or hobbies. It's, it, it adds, even when you're married, your friendships, you gotta be intentional about those. And you know, I remember people would say that or you see little quotes and stuff um, when people are getting married, you know, don't forget about your friends or, but then you have this period where you're honeymooning and then there's this, then it, you know, give it a few years and then you're like, I miss y'all. Right. Like, we like, we didn't leave, you were just in love. <laughs> but I think a lot of us stay at the surface of friendship mm -hmm. and there's so much more to be offered by going deep, being vulnerable, being honest and letting people really see you yeah. all the way. It's to me is so important. I remember when I first got married, I was a little annoyed with my husband. I'm like, why y'all always gotta be together? <laughs> like, what's going on over here? Yeah, everybody's figuring out we gonna do the game. And then I was like, hello, I'm not everything to him, and that's okay. And he's not everything to me. Even God, right? God, who is who's God, says you still. It's not good that man should be alone. Right. There's still someone else that 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 you need um, that I, I don't even, it's not that I can't feel it, I don't have to feel it. Mm. And so, yeah, I don't think we talk about friendships enough. Or, or how to cultivate them. Cause you do have to be intentional. Yeah. Intentional. Number three. I like stuff that comes naturally um, and they don't always come naturally. Okay, number three. I feel like it's all in the same area. <laughs> so I'm like low key trying to find something else quickly. <laughs> Um, I think, I, I think we should talk more about, all right, family dynamics, parents, how you relate to your parents and your siblings. I think birth order matters. It's a whole thing. How many, you're a, you're the baby in how many siblings? Just two of us. Just two. Okay. So we, hello, we, I got it easy. I don't have a sister. I have an older brother. So I don't know. I look at y'all with sisters and I'm like. Ooh, glory be to God, I'm so, but then also I'm like, I don't have a sister, because then y'all like do yeah. stuff and go shopping and do brunches and things. Um, Family is an amazing thing. It is also a bed of dysfunction and uh, lifelong issues that you can't run away from because they're your family. I mean, like, it's amazing. And it's also like firecrackers. Well, I didn't know that because there were only the two of us and my parents and my, like our outside family, like we weren't really connected yeah. to them. So it was just like, oh, that's four and no more. Like, and it was good. But as we're getting older, I'm like, oh, there are things. It's like Patterns. lifting up a rock and there's like yes. bugs under there. And yes. mind you, all of this stuff is, I guess God made it and it's good. I'm talking about the bugs, but you know, I realize like there are so many secrets that mm. my grandmother has kept and and things that come out and I'm like, oh, that's why that makes sense. Because in my life, I, I really walked around like avoidant and like, okay, and, no and blinders on. built a house for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you build a house for your kids. You don't want them to know about the horrible things. You don't yep. want them to know that, you know, uncle so-and-so was uncle so-and-so. Like oh there, you know, goodness. like there are things you don't want mm -hmm. because the thought is, is we're protecting family members from knowing hard things. But what happens is sometimes is some of those hard things are spiritual DNA. Some of those hard things are genetic DNA. Yeah. And those things don't go away just because you don't talk about them. Hello? So and if that's you don't talk, talk about them, about <laughs> if you don't talk about them, the weeds just come up in other places and the people don't yes. know why this is growing here. And you didn't tell them that, oh yeah, this is underneath the soil. It's a whole thing. Can we tell the people what's <laughs> going on? Yeah. I've realized that most of the reason that people don't grow is because there's an absence of truth. Mm. We're not actually communicating we don't know what's going on. And so some people are walking around confused. They don't, there are patterns in my life that I realized 
when I learned some of my grandmother's secrets, I'm like, oh, I feel like if I had known She's it, me. <laughs> like, that happened to me too. I was like, what? Why did somebody say something? Yep. Because I could have maybe been a little more vigilant, like, to, because you know, when you're breaking a curse, you're, you know what you're breaking. Right. I know what I'm coming against. I'm not playing with this. It's almost like I nobody told you who the enemy was. Right. And now we dating. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm in love, so yeah. I can't let him go. <laughs> it's like, oh no. But I, but I think the honesty should hopefully free uh, future generations. And so I've already started having conversation with, conversations with my daughter that I think she doesn't want to have. And I don't care mm -mm. because I'm like, hey, I just want you to see what this is. And there are certain decisions she's made already. She's like, mommy, I decided I'm just I'm not going to date until I get to college. I said, yes and amen. <laughs> Give yourself a break. Yes. Focus on school, That's right. you know, and I don't know. Now, maybe there'll be something that comes from that. Because yeah. here's the thing. You can't avoid everything. You can't. But I want her to make decisions from a place of knowledge, knowledge and understanding, you know, and like, hey, this is what has happened. Just look, you know caution i'm not fear mongering yeah right but i but i just want you to be in the know that's amazing okay last book you read that was great oh my goodness or do you read i do not <laughs> read do you i'm literally like okay? colossians <laughs> hello okay. okay can we deal with that no 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 <laughs> no can we deal with this that you i'm don't just read? trying to read my bible <laughs> i'm just trying to read my word how did we get here? I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be a student of the word. I can't read everybody's book, but, but. <laughs> um, I think, okay, I, the last book I read was Woman Evolved. I haven't finished it. <laughs> it was Woman Evolved. I do listen to Audible. I do listen to books okay, on that tape. that counts. But let's be honest. You only listen halfway. Hello? Cause you're doing it while you're doing something else. So okay. you can listen to it, but it don't have the same. It's not yeah. hitting the way it's supposed to hit. And then I'm I'm that person that, you, you have you ever done this when you're reading a book, you keep reading the same line over and over. If yes. you're thinking about like, what am I making for dinner? And then you, and keep you just keep rewind, you keep hitting back I'm 30 rewind, seconds. rewind, rewind, rewind. <laughs> but I'm already where I'm supposed to go. I'm, Cause I do this in the car. I'm already there. I can't, I'm more of a sermon girl. I can listen okay. to sermons. Did, I was gonna say, who did you last listen to? The last person, okay. She gonna think that I'm just trying to, I love her, this is my friend. Last person I listened to was Sarah Jakes Roberts. Uh -huh. I can't even tell you what it was about. Doesn't matter. Don't remember right now, but. You know, you're um, supposed to evolve. Hello, That's I'm trying. consistently the thread through those messages. Yes. Evolve. Um, Matt Rise. Chandler is one of my favorite preachers. Yeah. Um, I, I like to listen to, I, he kind of yells at you the whole time. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yell at me a little bit. Shake me up. Like, remind me of the, the point of the gospel. I want that. Like, ooh. Um, yeah, and my pastor, listen to him. Okay. A few folks in my church. So you love Jesus. You listen to Jesus. I Read do. Read Jesus, all that. I do. I started this book by, um, what's her name? Uh, ooh, she's an older female actress. She's in Blackish. What's her name? I just, why would I leave? Um, the one that yells all the yes. time? Yes. It's funny, child. I put it on Audible. What's her name? Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer uh, Lewis. Lewis. Jennifer Lewis. She's, She's like, you know what? Funny. I'm crazy. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. Y'all get comfortable with me. I love her. Yes. I've listened to a book by Tina Fey. Like, yeah. I want comedy book me. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't even have, I don't, I, it's, We're not it's reading. so much. That's fine. We're not reading. Uh, the last great out. meal you had. You doesn't just, matter, doesn't matter if you made it, you had it at home, you ate it out, but you were like, oh my God, I cannot wait to eat that again. Okay. Yes. I was in the Nashville airport. Okay, because air, airports matter. Airport food matters. Airport food matters. And I think you hate me if you don't have good restaurants in your airport. Like personally, whoever built the airport hates me, developers. Anyway. So I went to this place. I don't know why I have to talk like this now. Because <laughs> that's what we do okay. when we're food connoisseurs. We're like, okay, so let me tell you where you need to go. Go ahead. It's, steak is in the name. I can't even remember the name of the place because we were between two places. Where are we going to go? What kind of place? It's, it's a, like a barbecue southern place. I don't know, but I know it's in Concourse C, I think. Like we don't know if this is a chain, no, like it D. only exists in no, the airport? Only, yeah, I think it's a one one off. 
I think it's a one-off. I don't think but it's a change. But you've been in the Nashville airport many a time. Yes. And you only had it this one time or you have only it Only this one time. I decided to, usually when I get to the airport, I'm like getting to the airport to get on the plane. I'm not spending my time Can we the Google airport. that? Can we find out what the name of the steak something restaurant? It's and what steak kind of and food? something. It's in um, Terminal D. Uh, like, it's like American Southern kind of, okay. that kind of praise. They have. She said that kind of praise. Hello. And amen. Okay. It's a yummy praise. So it was the brisket. But they have, <laughs> they have this blueberry barbecue sauce, which sounds a little strange, but it's amazing. On a bed of mashed potatoes and collard greens. And I'm going to tell you that I was blessed. I mean blessed. I mean. Beyond measure. I'm thinking of it. My mouth is watering right now. I've thought of this meal multiple times after. And I was there with my manager. I'm, and I hit him. I was like, yo, we got to go back to the airport. <laughs> to get this food. And I'm almost sad. I don't know if I want to because if it's not as good as it was the first yes, time. Yes, that I'm happens. Not. That's a problem. Where you had it and you go back and it's not the same. <sighs> I get the pizza all the time. I don't know, is it 1821? It's on the corner of Concourse C in Charlotte. And it's a restaurant and they have mm -hmm. great, they have great things. So when you're coming 18, in 21. there, it's right there on the corner. Okay. 18 something. Okay. It's great. Everything I've I had is great. I haven't really eaten, and I'm usually like, oh, go to the lounge and sit there. You can take it to the lounge. Order and take it to the lounge. Yeah. The I'm lounge is also a blessing to the things. body of Christ. Okay. I need your list of restaurants. Okay, anyway, sorry. I'm going to focus. Okay. Oh, you found it? The Southern Steak and Oyster. The Southern Steak and Oyster. <laughs> the Southern <laughs> steak and oyster. <laughs> Write it down. Write that down. Next time you're in Nashville, you should go. <laughs> I'm so serious though. Ooh, my mouth is watering. Okay. Last time you cried was over. Oh, I was like, today. Okay. Oh no, why would you do this to me? You don't have to go in, just. I know. I, it was over. <laughs> I was watching Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got caught up. I'm behind. I'm, I, well, it was Queen Charlotte. Okay. And there's, a, I won't spoil it for anybody. Yeah, don't spoil I was it. just looking at the state of someone who was not in their right mind and mm -hmm. someone had to save them from themselves, like they were trying to fix themselves. Mm -hmm. And she went to save him from, from fixing himself. And I was so moved and I was like, this is, life is just hard and but love overcomes everything. <laughs> and I love that. And I'm sitting here and then I, then I was sad. I was mad at myself. I'm like, you're like one of these women that cry at the, at the shows and the movies. Cause I've never been that person. I never used to cry at stuff. Like I, the notebook, I'm like, all right, next card. How old are you? I'm 36. Oh, it's, there's more coming. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I know I really don't want it. And I'm and you're looking at me with the look like, well, it doesn't matter. It's coming. But I want you to know that I don't want it. And I'm going to say it one more time. I don't want it. I don't want it. I can't be sick. I'm getting ready to come see you. And I'm over here crying. I'm doing my makeup. I had to redo it. That's, that's really why we're late that's, today. That's fine. You weren't late. You're right on time. That's really kind of you. But if I had not cried. <laughs> I would have been more on time. And you wouldn't have had an answer to the question. That was a great answer. That's true. Last time you laughed so hard, you almost couldn't stop, maybe even beat on yourself a little. Okay, I'm a mother of three, incontinence is a, a normal thing for me. <laughs> so um, all I need is a little chuckle, like there this just is, now. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. um, um, I don't think I, wait, do I remember? Um, I don't remember what I was laughing at, but I do remember who I was with. Okay. Um, I was with, I was, we were in a, a church meeting, um, and I was, I was explaining to them it something that happened. doesn't matter what you were laughing at. But you were in was, a church meeting. I was so in a church. Sometimes in a meeting, you know, send me a text. Me <laughs> sometimes the funniest thing is being in the meeting, having a whole nother conversation <laughs> via text because we don't even want to be in this meeting. Okay. Okay. I was with those people late it was just it was 11 40 something we're still talking <laughs> and brought up a joke and oh it was about beetlejuice like this i don't know if you remember the guy the shrunken head guy <laughs> and we, somebody made a face it looked like that i laughed so it, it's hard about nothing and nothing but the at best all. laughter ever and these are with like the best people i love them so much and we laughed and we laughed i might still go back and laugh about it that's amazing if there is one thing that from this conversation today that you're like, if you've watched to this point or you've listened to this point, 
This is the thing I want you to know. Could be about anything. That we talked about or that I feel? Anything. Okay. But they're watching this right now. You're like, if, I, if you don't ever watch another thing I do, if you don't ever watch one of my card chats, if you don't ever listen to another one of my songs, and you can't say that Jesus loves you because that's a given. What is the this one thing, what is the one thing you're like, remember that Naomi said? I want to say, because this is impacting me, this moment. Mm -hmm. Normally when I come to Dallas, I'm with your sister. I Everybody's was normally with Anthony her. last night. And then. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then I mean you. And I'm like, Priscilla, I'm sorry. I love you. No, I'm just kidding. No. But I. It's just another one. Yeah. But I was with Anthony last night mm -hmm. and we were texting today. Love y'all. And I'm realizing that certain. Like I'm understanding good stock. Mm. And. So the thing about stock, okay, I went to culinary school. So the thing about stock is that it's So that restaurant must really be good because <laughs> you can't go to culinary school and praise an airport restaurant and that not really means something. So just throw back, put weight on that, but go ahead. The it's thing you're true. realizing is. The thing I, I about mm. stock, right? They make it from the bones of yes. the animal, whatever animal, but it's not complete without herbs, mm -hmm. carrots, celery, mm -hmm. other things that add to it. And when I am around y'all, I understand mm. I, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I go, I can't attribute that to you mm -hmm. or y'all. Mm -hmm. I attribute it to your parents. I attribute, mm -hmm. and I know we've all been through stuff and the whole nine. It's the same thing that people say when they talk to me and my mm -hmm. brother, they're like, hey, when we come in y'all's house, we just feel peace. Right. We and I just want to say to people, because I think there are people that will look at people like you or people like me and go, oh, but you came from so much and you came from good parents and all of that. And I want to encourage people to remember it's not just, I think your parents are the bones, right? But the bones are just bones, right? And without the herbs and the season, there, there's no character to this thing. And my prayer is that anybody who feels like they didn't come from the right place or the right family, that they would connect mm -hmm. and find people. I'm, Cause I'm sitting here and I'm looking at people in this room that have become my family. Yeah. That yeah. God has brought to me, that have helped shape me and, and mold my life and help move me along the path. And things that when I just used to hear from him like this, and now I'm hearing from him like this, I'm just seeing the full circleness, and it only happened because I opened myself and said, I'm going to allow people in. And so, I know it was a long way to come down to saying this. Let people in. Wow. Let That's people cool. in. Don't be afraid of being hurt so much that you don't allow yourself to be blessed. Because my greatest pain, yes, has come from people, but my greatest blessing, and I'm telling you, that laughter far outweighs the, the tears that I've yeah. cried yeah. every single time. I would give so much just to have another laugh like that. I would risk the tears. Mm. And so I hope that we are open to, to people and, and the right people, right? And, um, and all that God wants to bring to us to help continue to mature us in him. That's so good. That's it. Well, thanks for being you and being open because your your willingness to be like, this is who I am, to tell the truth, to have conversations, the conversations you've been having and the conversation you're having with me today, it really is not just telling people to let people in, but you're showing people how to do it. So thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. This is great. We're going to be in black t-shirts and black leggings together. Yes. Eating great food at restaurants yes. and airports. Yes. <laughs> Oh, what's the name of your latest album? Oh, oh yeah. That. Um, it's called Cover the Earth. Cover the Earth. Yes, Cover the Earth. And you, do you want people to stream it or do you want people to buy it? Does it you matter? Know, it does matter. It matters. I think, I think buying. People don't know that it matters. It does really matter. Buying is always better. If you could pre-save it or buy it, that would be cool. And then stream it. After and then that. stream it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you bless the artist who did the work when you do that. So yeah. buy the album, buy the album. 
Thanks for being here, girl. Thank you for having me. Yeah.